Well, hello everyone. This is Ab at Time for Clocks, and if you saw the post I put on my community page, this was the little clock that I showed. It's a little New Haven desk clock from 1929. The model is called Quality. I was thinking of doing my next repair video with this clock. Just to give you a quick look at it here. And it is missing a foot on the bottom. It's missing part of it, part of the uh, corner. See? And one of the feet. And I'm not sure if those these uh, they look like uh, upholstery tacks put in the bottom I'm not sure if those are original or not I will have to investigate that but it is a cute little clock with very nice uh, design since I posted that I did get another clock and this is also New Haven the time period I'm not certain I'm thinking 1930s possibly 40s I don't know it's just a, a one-day movement and a little desk novelty horseshoe clock and this is leather and this is leather and this I believe is chromed metal I think it has an attractive look to it. I've never seen one like it, and it's not in any of the books or catalogs I've looked at. Perhaps uh, somebody out there has seen it or has one. The dial is real nice, in good shape, but the glass is missing. It would have a uh, slightly convex round glass there in the front so I'll have to locate a piece of uh, glass like that and this leather on the bottom I'm not certain about this I don't know if it was all dark at one one point like this or this is a burn or scorch or just an unsightly discoloration I'm not certain but I think the original color is more like something that you have on here and leather over time it does degrade and then it crumbles and then it, yeah like a dry cookie sometimes it you break you uh, flex it and it just snaps apart leather has to be it has to be moisturized so but I, I just couldn't resist the design of it it was just had a real nice look to it that I thought it was very appealing and regardless of what's wrong with it I just thought it was cute along with this one even though it's missing a foot and they are both ticking right now but even if an old clock is ticking of course it should still be cleaned in service because you never know how long that's been and we do it our we learn to do it ourselves because it's very expensive to have it done professionally if you can afford it that's fine but if not that's the only other option to keep your clocks in good running order let me move this out of the way i have a a clock here that came today and it is a Goodwill clock and I haven't I've never seen one quite like it if I can get out of the light that would help I've never seen one quite like it it's a wall clock and it is in pretty poor shape pretty poor shape the um, see the door watch
the um, surround for the glass on the bottom and the top. See that? It's totally separated. Yeah, and get the camera over here. See, it's just totally separated. Oh, the sliding is okay. So if we uh, zoom in a little bit, you'll see some, you'll see uh, something here on the dial, which appears to be Spanish. I'm not certain, but it looks like Balestor y Mora, and and I think that's the name of a a retailer, a store in Valencia in, in Valencia. So uh, first I thought, oh, is that a Valencia clock? But if you notice the crossed arrows here. That is the symbol for the clock make, German clockmaking firm known as Hawk, H-A-C, the Hamburg American Clock Company. And they were, they merged or were taken over by Jungens in 1930. So I would say that this clock, just based on a rough estimate, may have been made in the 20, 1920s or earlier maybe the 1910s it's I'm not an expert and I, I'm not sure how to how to date these unless you can find a catalog with this model in it but it has this strange little brass embellishment here on the top or accoutrement I'm not sure the proper term and on the door, once I get out of the light, you can see this little, looks like a brass, little brass design here with a little person. Let's see. I mean, well, yeah, it's just uh, lighting's problematic here. There we go. See that? And there's one on each side. When we clean that up, maybe we can see uh, more of what that, that little person is supposed to be doing. So it just has three metal pieces, and I don't know if some are missing. There's some holes here. It's possible this isn't even original and someone just put it on there. But even if that's the case, I do plan to just... Uh, Try to make this structurally sound, presentable, and running. And even if these things did not belong, it's all right. I don't mind it. And the glass here, this glass, it's like a nice leaded type of beveled glass. It's just really attractive. So when I saw this clock, even though it was so beat up, so ugly, I saw features in it that just attracted me the little the little ornaments here and the glass and the dial there's not really anything special about it but I never saw Spanish writing on a clock before and then inside there's all these pieces this is for the top of the case and like most wall clocks, it pro was probably not on the wall properly and took a big tumble. And this, this goes in the side right there, like this. I'm not exactly certain what that's for. I've never had a clock with that. But on, on first thought, I don't know if these just come out a little bit or you're supposed to remove them. But I think it's to let more of the sound of the the clock striking to let the sound out. I'm not uh, somebody might be able to correct me on that. I'm just guessing. Even even have some cobwebs in there. All right, what else is in here? Pretty good size, pretty good size pendulum. 
Pretty good size. Okay. I don't know if that's original or not. Probably not. Well, who knows? This is, I think this is from part of the, what holds the glass in, glass uh, wood retaining strips. Then there's this little piece. Not actually sure where that goes, but that should reveal itself in due time. And then it has this gauge here when the pendulum's going back and forth. I guess it's to uh, adjust, help adjust the clock for level. You can move the case this way or that, and then when it's perfectly swings perfectly in each direction, that would equally that would be optimal for the clock. And there's another piece of wood, and then uh, there's there's some other things jammed up in there. The glass is just, I don't know where they stored this before they gave it to Goodwill. But the glass is actually nice and thick and the edges are rough cut. I think that is an old piece of glass. At least it looks that way. It looks like it's original. So let's put that aside. And now you can look at the dial a little better without my getting in the light. And I don't even know what kind of dial that is. Let's see. Got to take the hands off first in order to access the dial. Can I do that with one hand? I don't know. It has a it has a taper pen in the uh, in the hour shaft. So let's just bend that out. Let's see if I can. Yeah, I think so. Oh, okay. I just broke it. That needs to be replaced anyway. Okay, it came out. I'm trying to do this one handed. This is just to see what's going on in here. I might have to use something other than my fingers. Yeah, that's in there pretty good. Oh, let's see here. From the bottom, there's another piece of wood up here. And look out, it is dirty. I should warn people, if you're a germaphobe, please don't watch this video. piece for the other side. So, <laughs> so when I was thinking about repairing this little desk clock that I showed you earlier, I, uh, I got this one. I'm like, wow, this really needs attention. So let me try to remove this hour hand here and see what's underneath there just to show you and see if there's some HAC clockmaker marks on the movement plate. Okay, I did pop it off. I had to use two hands, so I had to put the camera down, but I popped off the hour hand. Okay, now that's free, and, and this dial... Wow, it's kind of heavy. It is? Yeah, it's heavy. Wow, look at that thick plate, metal plate. The sticker here is not legible at all. I don't know what that is. Makers, uh, but anyhow, it uh, seems to be held on to these little, it's supposed to have some tabs that are supposed to hold on the dial, but I've since uh, 
but I've since failed either because of its accident or neglect or or what so I'll have to investigate that later yeah it's, I guess it's glued on there so let's put that aside there's the movement there it is let's see what we got looks like the the wire bell that it strikes the hours on is way in the back that's an unusual configuration and since it's ne next to this these windows i think that is for the sound because it's right next to the to the wire bell so removing those wood pieces or opening them if they do open partially would let more sound out and then at night maybe plug them up i don't know well just a cursory glance i do not see any imprints on the movement plate but there may be something on the other side uh, complete with spiders complete with spiders and dust and everything working with the oil in there to come to a halt interesting barrel springs wonder how wonder, wonder what shape those are in so it has two barrels there Okay, so these just these just loosen up, and then this whole movement slides out. That's kind of handy. You can adjust that up or down, so there's a good fit with the dial. So, uh, how does the dial fit on there? I'm not, I'm not sure how that. Like there's no ridges or anything for the the edge the edge of this bracket here. That must the dial must just sit on there, but on the top there's nothing. Nothing to support it. That's weird. Yeah, you just don't want a heavy dial just resting on the movement itself. Hmm. That's odd. Okay, well, learn something new. That's why I like old clocks. You can learn something new all the time. Oh, what's going on? What's all that noise over here? Oh, little stinkers. Oh, little stinkers. Okay. Well, okay, now that that's off, all these hinges everything's just loose and this bottom piece here <clears throat> uh, it's loose right here see it's a crack yeah there's a big gap at the bottom so, oh, there we go. See, watch. Yeah. Well, as old as this looks, it's actually doing pretty good. I don't know what kind of wood that is. So that door here that I showed you, there's the one on the other side is missing, so I will have to make one. I'm not, and I don't know what kind of wood that is. So that is a challenge. That is a challenge and a half for me. <laughs> yeah, if you don't know what you're doing, that's a challenge. But uh, yeah, I just had to rescue it. These, this beveled glass, I just, I, I'm, I'm really partial to that kind of, it just elevates clocks to the next level when you have that uh, 
beveled glass, I think. <laughs> All right, looking at this uh, dial backing plate more, more closely, I see these three standoffs. So when the bottom rests against this, these other ones rest directly against the movement. I think that's how it works. I think those rest against the movement itself, the movement plate. So it's just kind of held standing off of there. I'm not sure I like that design, but uh, there it is. And these pins, if you look, the one on the top is okay, but this one here is bent. And this one's bent. So I think that when this hit the ground, these were bent down. I don't know if you can see it very good, but they are bent. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I've never worked on a clock like that. It's um, rather intimidating. But these uh, time only clock here and here, I'm gonna try those first. And if you're new to clock repair, always take pictures, pictures and videos on your phone. Phones have come a long way, so you can take a lot of great pictures and video. So when you have a box full of parts, you just, oh, I can't remember where they go. <laughs> so you just look at the pictures. Yeah, yeah. That one, the one lady said, you're adorbs. She said, you're adorbs. Yeah, she said, you're a cutie. She said, you're a cutie. And so did Miss Amy. Miss Amy likes to see baby stinks. Baby stinks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, if anyone knows about the New Haven horseshoe clock, Please feel free to leave a comment. I'd like to learn more about it as well. It has a little one day movement. And again on the New Haven desk clock here, the quality, as they call it, missing a foot. That's supposed to have an eight day jeweled movement. And uh, Jeweled movements might be problematic. You can't. I don't think you can clean them in the ultrasonic cleaner. I think that might dislodge the jewels, and then that would not be good, especially if you lost them. This is a 1929 advertisement that has that little clock there in the middle there. The quality, the little clock one I just showed you. And it calls it a 8D jewel desk or boudoir clock. And if you know how to pronounce boudoir, <laughs> is it boudoir or is it boudoir? I don't know. If you can help me out, I profess my ignorance and knowing how to pronounce that word. A monicum of humility is good. So I appreciate any help. If you know anything about either of those clocks and the wall clock, the what I believe is the HAC, Hamburg American clock, which had really nothing to do with America. And it was actually started in the 1800s. And the American part in their name, I believe, is simply because they adopted American principles of manufacturing in their, in their clock industry in Germany for the HAC company. I think prior to them doing that, a lot of elements of clock making were farmed out to different areas. One, per, one, one place over here made something for the clock. Another place made something else. And then they had to ship them to the factory where they were put together. But I think the HAC company with Amer American standardized and modern industrial methods in the, I think it was the 1840s at the time, that's why they called it HEC. My memory's not the best, but I I read that somewhere. 
Okay, well, if you do know about any of these clocks, again, please feel free to leave a comment. I welcome the new subscribers. And amateur clock repair in history is... It's always interesting. You're always learning these three clocks alone. How do you re restore leather on a clock? That's going to be challenging. I have some ideas. I, I have done a little le leather working in the past, and I have a lot of supplies that are just laying around. Oh, where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? So, uh, all right. Well, I hope everyone stays safe, and until next time, take care of those around you. You never know how long we all have. Take care. Oh, look at that little baby. Look at that little baby. Oh, look at that little baby. Oh. You're a nice baby. You're a nice baby. You're a nice baby. Say hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Take a nap. Hmm? You want to take a nap? Hmm? <laughs> okay.